Greetings friends, it's me, Wayman29, and this is a video going out to love Jesus, please. And, um, I just wanted to say that, uh, uh I got your response, thanks, and I kind of wanted to throw a stone in the theological, the calm theological pool, because the video I made was very moving, and, uh, I was just upset by the cheesy comments that were being left, and, um, the seemingly helpless, uh, replies. And so I wanted to create some kind of discussion on it, on, on maybe what our mission is, uh, what we should be doing, and if we're doing enough, and if we're not doing anything, uh, why not? And can we rest easy when there's suffering in the world, um, and, and whatnot. And I appreciate everybody who, who commented, many theological views on that, some great discussions happened, and um, I, I think it was... Uh, out of the ordinary for that to happen normally uh, on such a video and um but it needs to happen more it needs to happen more i think so um love jesus please uh wanted me to answer a question in his last video uh, he he wrote on one of my samuel videos uh here are some of my studies i keynoted in first samuel any any lists um some verses These verses are mainly to do with the glimpses of Holy Spirit. Um, fortunately, it is Holy Spirit. Because nothing in New Testament cannot be found in the Old Testament. They used it, and they borrowed heavily, as we will see. There's even, there's even an Old Testament Pentecost. And um, the only thing that happened in the New Testament that didn't happen in the Old Testament is a virgin birth and the claim that a man can become a god. Those are the only two things that happened in the New Testament that did not happen in the Old. Here you have the Spirit of the Lord uh, falling upon people, prophesying, or healing, they're acting uh, in a frenzy. You see in Samuel with the with the school of the prophets. So all of that was known to the writers of the New Testament and the writer of Acts, and he used it to convey the message. And so, what does that have to say about Pentecost? Did the Comforter need to actually come again for some reason when he was very much active? in the Old uh, Old Testament. So, I, I guess it's just our views of the Gospels that are skewed. And, and if we look at it in, in, a, in, a, in a nutshell, Matthew, Matthew um, tried to show Jesus' Jewishness uh, by the uh, genealogy and that he was uh, the Jewish Messiah uh, sent by God to the Jewish people for fulfillment of uh, Jewish law. And even on the Th Sermon on the Mount, uh, uh, Matthew has Jesus stress that his followers also must uh, adhere to uh, Jewish law. A and Matthew uh, portrays Jesus as some kind of new Moses who provides uh, the correct interpretation of uh, the Mosaic law and, and expects everybody to keep it. And, of course, Jesus rejected by the Jewish leaders and um, whatnot. So, so you, get to, uh, you get to Mark. Mark, um, in a nutshell, is Jesus' is Messiah, but he's totally misunderstood. Nobody understood who he was, not even the apostles. And even after his death, nobody understood except for one person the Gentile centurion, who said, truly this man is the son of God. Uh, Luke, um, Luke wrote to show the point of view that he believed uh, the salvation was rejected by the Jewish people, and so it was sent out to the, to the non-Jews and Gentiles. This is where uh, Christians get their view from this. The narrative explains uh, the movement of God's salvation from Jew to Gentile by portraying Jesus as a Jewish prophet rejected by his own people. Jesus is born as a prophet 
preaches as a prophet, heals as a prophet, and dies as a prophet. And everything, according to Luke, happens to a divine plan. So, what you need to do is take out John. If you got a word processor, copy all of Luke, put it in a... I've done this. Copy all, put it in Word or something, without the chapter headings. And then take Acts, put it right in there. Just read it all. Because Acts is a continuation of Luke. And sometimes you can't get the epic if John is in the middle. And everything in Acts it mirrors Luke. So everything that Jesus did, the apostles now do. And this is done to validate the message of the apostles and to show that supposed um, divine plan. So, John builds up the Christology of Christ. Um, in a nutshell, that's, that's what it is. And like Paul, he builds up the Christology of Christ as divine. So, let's look at the um, word spirit in the Old Testament. So we're going we're gonna to search this. I think I already have it in here somewhere. So we got the Hebrew word uh, for familiar spirit, which is different, is ob, O-B-E. There's also a word uh, neshama, which is, uh, which is the divine inspiration or intellect or the wind or the puff. Here we have kostur, it's the shortness of spirit, impatience. There's also a spirit of jealousy, also a spirit of anger. Also, a, uh, uh, a spirit, an evil spirit. We'll 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 take a look at that later. Uh, the ruka, which is used the most, uh, uh, both for man and describing the divine. Uh, Jewish theology teaches that God breathed uh, into man the breath of life, and he became a living soul. So, uh, man's spirit also is the same name as the Spirit of God. And here's another variant of that. So, getting back to the Old Testament idea of Spirit, here you have the Ruka, um, uh, Genesis 1, 2, all of these. So, so let's go to that Pentecost uh, in Numbers, uh, chapter 25. We'll see how the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of the Lord uh, moves people. And, and the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him and took of the Spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the seventy elders. Here's the bet din. And it came to pass that when the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied. So here, Holy Spirit descends. Here it's a cloud. New Testament, it's a dove upon Jesus. This validates Jesus as a true prophet or as a true spiritual leader. And a lot of times the spirit resting upon uh, validates them as prophets. Also, what they prophesy has to come true. There were, there were uh, requirements for this. We just didn't believe everybody like we do today. And they prophesied and did not cease. There remained two of the men in the camp, the name of one Eldad and the name of the other Medad, and the Spirit rested upon them, and they were of them that were written, but were not unto the tabernacle, and they prophesied in the camp. And there ran a young man, and told Moses, and said unto El and said, Eldad and Medad do prophesy in the camp. And Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, Moses, one of his young men, answered and said, My lord, Moses, forbid them. So here... In the New Testament, where this example could be used, is when the person is casting out devils in Jesus' name, and um, the disciples say to Jesus, "Hey, should we stop them?" And Jesus says, "No, because who's ever for us is, I mean, who's ever not against us is for us." Uh, and Moses said unto them, um, "Thou, for my sake, would God all that the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put." his spirit upon them.
So, so there we have it. 70 people prophesying without ceasing. Interesting. So, now we go to some of these. Um, so you might ask about the evil spirit of the Lord. Where does that come from, and how does that come about? And, and this is, this is, um... Um, in First Kings uh, 22. First Kings 22. We'll take a look at that. And, and how does that work? And this is what makes me think there's a heavenly council. And this is, this is possibly uh, another hypothesis on how the, the Spirit of the Lord uh, the Spirit of the Lord when he leaves Saul and then an evil spirit from the Lord um, is sent. So, so here, and the Lord said, uh, we'll go up to uh, a couple before that. And, and here is, um, the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you, that, did I not tell thee, you would prophesy no good concerning me, but of evil? <laughs> so, the king already um, knows he, he might get a bad deal here. And Jehoshaphat, he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on the throne and all his hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner and another said on that manner. So here they're debating it. The heavenly council is debating it. And there came forth a spirit, and stood before the Lord, and said, I will go, persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him, and prevail. Also, go forth, and do so. So here, the lying spirit is sent from, from the Lord. So let's let's look at um, the idea of spirit as a whole um, in the in the Bible. This King James version. This might not grab them all because sometimes translators aren't exactly honest about how they translate. But we'll do our best. Search the Old Testament. So here's the rukah. All these mostly are rukah. That his spirit was troubled. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he, and he spent and called for, and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt. So here, even Pharaoh's spirit is Ruka, a, a man in whom the spirit of the Lord is Ruka, and Moses for anguish of spirit. So we'll go down. Here is the spirit of wisdom. Spirit of God. A familiar spirit here is Ob. Um, so anytime you see a familiar spirit, it will be this. And the spirit of jealousy came upon him. Spirit Raka. Raka. So here it's uh, seen as um, emotions. Spirit rested upon them. Uh, we read from 11. God hardened his spirit. For the Lord thy God hardened his spirit. Spirit of wisdom. So here, when especially in judges, you see uh, heroes like Samuel um, and, and the judges, saviors of Israel, uh, uh, where the spirit of the Lord falls on them. Same kind of stuff. They're empowered. 
same kind of stuff you, you find in the New Testament. So, my question is, the Holy Spirit does exist. God is a spirit. His presence is felt in different kinds of ways. And he's anthropomorphic, which means if he wants to change into human form, he can. He doesn't need virgin birth to do it. You see that happening in Jacob. You see that happening in Abraham. When some New Testament readers read back into the Old Testament, they mistake these um, anthropomorphic episodes where, where he stands before Samuel as being Jesus. As being Jesus. I've heard of that. So, it's, it's pretty interesting indeed. And I would suggest going to the Jewish Encyclopedia and looking up uh, the term Holy Spirit see what they have to say about it because the issue is there's so many words for spirit in the New Testament um, you can't even swing a cat by the tail without hitting a demon you know um, the Greek Hellenistic influence is so heavily saturated the uh, cosmology and the eschatology of New Testament literature it totally changes uh, in the New Testament, and it means something very different. However, uh, what the apostles were said to have experienced and the way that the Gospel writers wanted their stories to be read and how they wanted to portray the events when, when read is heavily borrowed from Old Testament ideas. There is nothing new about it, and so the, the Spirit of the Lord existed at the beginning of the creation, when it blows across the face of the waters, which is beautiful. So, um, there you have it. Kind of long. Sorry about droning on so much. But take care, friends. And remember, if everybody's thinking alike, then somebody isn't thinking.